Section 10.1 talks about correlations. So we have correlation and regression, 10-1 correlation, 10-2 regression. Correlation measures how strong a statistical relationship is between two numerical variables. We have explanatory variable. This is predictor variable. And we have a response variable. And that is the outcome variable. So here, this is the EV, which is ex explanatory variable. That's the predictor variable. This is the independent. This is the independent variable used to predict. or explain differences explain differences in a response variable and here we have the response variable, which is the dependent the dependent found as an outcome as an outcome that is measured. that is measured following a manipulation of the EV. Following a manipulation of the EV or explanatory variable. So this depends on the EV. And here, the way to distinguish the difference between those two variables is by asking which statement makes sense. And let's look at that. A researcher wants to examine whether babies fed on breast milk are more or less likely to be ill. A. Feeding a baby on breast milk causes resistance to disease. Resistance to disease causes a baby to feed on milk. Of course, it's A. <coughs> Can you identify which variable is which? Presence or absence of milk, that is the EV, and this is the RV, the resulting. So kind of like the cause and the effect, sort of speak. Identify the explanatory and response variable in the following. An experiment was conducted to test the effect of sleep deprivation, that's the EV, on human response time. That's what you read, that's the outcome. Researcher Penny Gordon Larson and her associate wanted to determine whether young couples who marry or cohabitate are likely, are more likely to gain weight than those they don't so here that's the EV that's really the independent and this depends on whether they get married or get together at a younger age now let's talk about what a scatter plot is it's a dot pairs it's quantitative you could look at the quantity a scatter diagram is often helpful in determining whether there is a relation between the two variables so remember 
Having a relation between the two variables doesn't mean one causes the other. For example, I could find a relation between smokers in France and people that work in a mine in Montana. That doesn't mean that one causes the other. It just means there's a correlation. So, positive correlation normally, it's a line with a positive slope, if you know what that means. As one variable increase, the other increase, so the variables move in the same direction. Negative correlation is like a line with a negative slope, that's a variable moves in opposite directions. As one increase, the other decrease. And no correlation, that's when you look, you can't fit a line. So you're looking kind of like if I fit a line, would that kind of fit in or not? That doesn't seem like there's a line that fit all of these points. Now, to test for a linear correlation, we attempt to draw a line that best fit the data. Every linear correlation is expressed by two features. The strength, that is, how close the points fall near a specific straight line. We use a numerical a numerical value to represent. And we're going to get that from the calculator. Direction. As x increase, if y increases, we say that's a positive correlation. As x increase, If y decreases, we say that's a negative correlation. Now, the strength of a linear correlation is represented by a numerical value called the correlation coefficient. And we call that r. r for correlation coefficient. The value of r is between negative 1 and 1, right? The value of r does not change if all the values of either variable are converted or use a different scale. It doesn't matter. r measures the strength of linear relations only. It does not measure nonlinear relations. And this is how it's going to work. Not to worry. This is a strong negative correlation this is a strong positive correlation this is a weak negative correlation and this is a weak positive correlation we figure out these values from our test statistics and if r falls in this region or this region we fail to reject the null hypothesis we say there is a correlation if r falls in that region we say there is no correlation, we reject the hypothesis. So when we get there, I'll talk more about that. So here's where you have a negative correlation, and here's when you have positive correlation. Here it's positive, and here it's negative. Now, again, be careful. Correlation does not simply mean causation. One doesn't cause the other. It only means just an association. There is a relation between them. Here's an example to really kind of eyeball this. Choose a word from each category to describe these plots on the left and right next to the plot. So pick one of each. So if you look at this, this looks linear. It does fit in a straight line, sort of speak. It is positive. Well, it's strong because those points are very close to that line. It is positive, so if I look at the values, I would probably say this, the strongest. I'll say R equals 0 0.886. 
this is linear, I would say it is a moderate positive correlation and probably I'll use the R equals 0 0.634. This seems to have no relation. it seems to be a weak correlation or non-correlation and I would say there are value it seems negative somewhat I'll probably give it this value this is linear it seems to be strong it seems to have a negative and the strongest of the negatives would be a negative 0 0.89 I will give it that actually now that I see this this is linear this is strong so compared to the strong I'm gonna call this moderate And I'm going to give this, I'm going to give this the R equal negative 0 0.73. I just saw that this is better. So this is a line, but this fits a line better. So I'm going to say this is negative as well, but this is definitely a stronger correlation than that. This is definitely nonlinear because this fits in a parabola, right? So we're gonna, it looks like a strong parabolic, but we don't study those. And it seems to be, well, no correlation. We don't even know how to measure those because we're not going to study that. And here we're going to say there is no R value. R value works only for linear, for straight line combination. Now, the value of R squared is the proportion of the variable in y that can be explained by linear relation between x and y not to worry about all of these terms we are going to find specific values from a calculator and do our test exactly the way we've been doing all along so different samples will produce different scatter plots and thus different r values all right they have kind of like few examples there our job is to take a large enough sample to get to the true popular linear correlation coefficients called rho. We are going to assume there is no correlation. If there's no correlation, we assume that rho equals zero and try to prove otherwise based on the sample. So the null hypothesis is very simple. We'll always claim it is zero. There's no correlation. The alternative will always assume it doesn't equal to zero, which means automatically this is always a two-sided test. So requirements, simple random variable, visual explanation shows strength, so shows straight line pattern, remove any outliers. Significance alpha, if they don't tell us what it is, 0 0.05, otherwise they have to state it. Their test statistics, R is going to be given from our calculator, 1 minus R squared. That's the t-test. And the degrees of freedom will be N minus 2 since there is no standard deviation. Critical values or p-value, we're going to do both like we always do. The p-value, I'll tell you. If the p-value is less than alpha, we reject all hypothesis. Fail to reject. And this is the rejection region. based on the test statistics, we'll do the same, but it's going to look slightly different, actually. I take that back. The rejection region is going to depend on R. So this is how it's going to work. The scale is always between negative 1 and 1. We're going to figure out the critical values. These are fail to reject.
and this is gonna be the rejection region so with correlation remember when we did strong positive strong negative in between once we get the critical value from our test statistics we're gonna figure out anything in there we will reject the null hypothesis we'll say there's no correlation basically we will use our ti84 we are going to go for stat test and linear regression test i'll show you how to use that no problem there is a table i'm going to be using as well that's provided on your formula sheet i'll show you where that is on the next two examples